would be a gross violation of my duty as a mother to be swayed by your momentary despair and yield to your impulse to run away. I am willing, if you desire it, to write to your parents. And I will try to convince them that you have done your very best this quarter, to the point of exhaustion even, and that too rigorous an assessment of your fate is not only unwarranted, but could be detrimental to your mental and physical health. In your letter, the hint that should escape not be possible, you may take your own life, was frankly more disturbing. No matter how awful or undeserved a disaster is, you should never think to make such a choice for yourself. That you would pass on the responsibility of such a grievous matter to me could be interpreted as nothing short of extortion. I must confess that from someone like you, who knows so well what one owes to oneself, this is the last thing I would have expected. However, I am firmly convinced that you are still too much under the influence of the fear of having failed that you could not be fully aware of your actions. I hope that these words find you in a better state of mind. You must face up to facts, Morris. It is my opinion that you cannot judge a young man by his school record. We have so many examples of poor students becoming excellent people and members of society, and vice versa. Excellent students have proven themselves less so. In any case, I assure you that your misfortune will not affect your friendship with Melchior, so long as I have any say in the matter. Indeed, it delights me to see my son in the company of a young man who has won my highest affection. So keep your head high, Herr Stiefel. Crises such as these come upon us all, and are there to be overcome. If we were all to resort to poison or blades, there would very soon be no more people in the world. Let me soon hear something more from you. Your words and your presence would be welcomed most fondly by me, your unchanging friend, Fanny Gabor.